God told Brother Hagin, go teach my people faith. And I think it was an end time thing because he was just kind of an itinerant preacher, even when you and I met him. Mm -hmm. And then, and then he came to Tulsa, and then just things started growing. God's hand just touched that. Tell them, tell them about how how large that first meeting was that we were in. 150 people, and we thought it was a big crowd. <laughs> 150 people, 1029 North Utica, Tulsa, Oklahoma. 1967. 1967. It was April, the first time I heard him. And uh, I'm telling you, we were so thrilled to hear. The name of Jesus. I don't remember anybody being turned away. No, in we that didn't have place, to, no, do you? <laughs> we didn't have to turn away crowds. Um, <laughs> but we heard about this. We heard about you can have what you say. We my we Jesus. heard things that change our life, and God touched it. Yeah, because yeah. God told him, "Go teach my people faith." And the Bible says that when Jesus comes, will he find faith on the earth? Well, you see, it was necessary yes, because will. when he comes, there will have to have been a people operating by faith. Amen. Now, when this happened. And it started going around the earth. I mean, it jarred people. It shook things up and um, shook me up. And then there were some people who couldn't quite understand it, you so know. So a big, a big crowd in those days was 150 150, people. but then it began to grow. You remember? Yeah. And, and just look, you know, what's happened all over the Word earth. Word churches all over the world. Yes, Faith all, churches all over all the world. world. And, and, but you know what? Some people had kind of an idea that it was new with us. That it was kind of just something new and came up. Some people still think Brother that. Hagen. Some people think we made it up, as a matter of fact. <laughs> and Brother Hagen kind of started it. The other day, I read an article, and, uh, and it, it was no, uh, kind of a derogatory article, and it said that the uh, prosperity message started with Oral Roberts. And I thought, oh, no, it didn't. It started with God. That's it right. started with Abraham. That's it right. started with the whole of Deuteronomy. And we've seen that this, this speech that we have is a gift of God mm -hmm. and we'll be accountable for it. Jesus said we would. The Bible teaches that we're accountable for the words we say. And uh, I, I like to study uh, so much from uh, what the Hebrews know about this. It goes way back there. And uh, I love the way they say things. And in this I book, uh, Hofetz Heim, it is so anointed. you have this book. You could get this book from uh, Kenneth and Gloria Copeland. And uh, they said God didn't just give us this power without giving us uh, rules of how it works and directions of, of, of how to use it. Uh, oh, let me read it the way they said it. By taking hold of our power of speech, we take hold of life itself. But Hashem, the name, that's what they call God, does not simply hand us this tremendous power and leave us to discover how it works. He gives us detailed instructions in the form of laws, which they call Shmiras Halashon, the guarding of the tongue. And if you want to know how much God has to say about it, just go to your concordance, look up words, mouth, speech, tongue. Just look those up. And you get all these laws of God, which tell you, about the operation of the power of speech and how it works. And uh, they say the sheer number of Torah directives relating to speech has no direct parallel in any, any other function. He told us more about the mouth and the tongue than he told us about the eyes. Well, isn't it interesting, I just noticed this first, how God himself operates by his own laws. That's right. This says in, in Genesis one twenty two. And God blessed them, saying. And God blessed them, saying. Saying. Be fruitful. He did not. Multiply. He did not bless them thinking. No. So he's just teaching us to do what he does. Why Absolutely. does he do that? Absolutely. Because it works. You know, this works for you. You say, well, I've, I've never done anything. I've, I've never really even had a good job. Well, look <laughs> at what you're doing. You're saying you never had a good job. Or you could be saying... You know, I've never had good health all my life. Wonder why? Because that's what you're saying. Now, I know this is true because we went from one way of life to another way of life using this revelation from the Word of God and finding out what God's Word says and then saying it ourselves. You believe something in your heart. That's right. And you release your faith with faith-filled words. words. That's right. 
And then it has the power to create. God's words had the power to create. And uh, then he gave a gift to man. We're talking about this gift. He gave it to all men, not just born-again Christians. That's right. He gave this gift to all men, and he started it with Adam. So this is the King James translation from original Hebrew into English. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living soul. And I want to establish that I didn't make this up. Uh, this has a, a foundation that is accepted by Hebrew scholars. That's right. And the, <clears throat> the translation, there is a translation of that verse, which is the Onkelos translation. I'm holding it up right here so you can see. You don't need this book. You don't need to call and see how to get it or anything. Uh, probably some of you will. But uh, you really don't need this. What you really need is, and I think it's a need, the stone edition of the Chumash, which will quote Onkelos, which translates that verse, The Lord God created Adam or Adam from the dust of the earth. He blew into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a speaking spirit. A speaking... Great revelation right there. Spirit? Yes, that's right. We're created in the image of God. God is spirit. Dogs can't talk. Squirrels can't talk. No! I'm spirit. Lions can't talk. I live in this house, you see, but I'm spirit made in the image right. of God and like God who created his world through his words. And God said, and God said, and God said, this world. Then I... Adam was given this ability to speak, intelligent speech. And in the Hebrew, there's a word. It's Strong's number 1697. Uh, and it's the Hebrew word for word. It's devar. And right in Strong's, if you use Strong's concordance, you will see that it can mean Three things. It can be translated three ways. It's the word devar. And the word is, the word devar, we might say D-V-R or D-B-R, devar. It means a word. It means a matter. Hmm. And it means a thing. And you'll see if you have a center reference Bible like I do that sometimes they translate that word, word. And then if you go into the middle, they'll say, or thing. Now, this is my own thinking, my own meditation. But I can see that the same Hebrew word for word, devar, is the Hebrew word for thing. Mm -hmm. And that a word becomes a thing. The word that you speak can become a thing. Whosoever shall say shall have whatsoever he saith. It can be a thing of healing. It can be a thing of blessing. It can become um, a house to live in. Mm -hmm. It becomes a thing, something you see. You believe it in your heart. You have to find the promise in God's word. You have to find the basis of it here to believe in God's word. But if you believe it, and then you say it, it comes to pass. What have you done with your gift of creative speech? Well, you can look around you and see. You can look around you and see. You can see what you've done. Now, we know that faith comes by hearing the word. Faith goes by saying Jesus taught us. And, and faith is the substance. The substance of things. Hopefully. Things, Faith things. gives substance. Hallelujah. Things Glory to God. of things hope for. You can turn your uh, financial situation around. You can turn your body around. You can turn habits in your life out to pasture. You can get rid of bad habits and create good habits. And you, this is the key. I mean, Ken and I never, we never begin to increase. We never had victory in our lives. We didn't know how to stay healed until we learned about our works. 